Jesse. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you so much for, for coming on. I really appreciate this. Thank um, you so much for having me you uh, know, on my computer. Uh, yeah. I, you just you did something that I, I've, I've dreamt of doing uh, my whole life, except you did it during a pandemic. You took an RV trip. I'd love to know about this. Yes, yes. I mean, it was out of necessity, not like any kind of, you know, dream or whim. It was like uh, we were like stuck in Los Angeles when, you know, the world shut down and we had to get back to Indiana where we uh, live. And so, yeah, we rented an RV so we can kind of like quarantine safely and also move. Uh, and, you, and obviously you took the baby with you. The, you know, was yeah. the did, did he like it? Did he, was he like, what's going on? Well, he's, oh, he's three, he's almost four. I just asked him today, do you remember when we spent that amazing week in the camper van? He said, no. <laughs> and I showed him a picture. I said, he's like, no, you, put on Paw Patrol, yeah. enough. I, I, I said, this was like the best week of your life. I showed him pictures. I said, you said this was the best thing in your life. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. I don't remember it at all. I've had that conversation before too, yeah. I'm wondering, do we have to do anything nice for our children before they're seven? They're not going to remember. No, seven's the age. That's when they start remembering, yeah. Really? So yeah, that's exactly it. But they don't yeah. care. They don't care at all. No, nothing. Until like seven. I buy myself stuff from now on. Were you nervous yeah. to drive that giant RV? I, yeah. I mean, I was a little nervous. It's a bit of a learning curve with the RV. And then if you're kind of like an idiot like me, you know, you feel cocky way premature, like way too prematurely. So like, you know, after like 20 minutes, once I didn't get into an accident, I started, you know, changing lanes of that signaling. Yeah, exactly. One hander. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the idiot seven year old boy who like, you know, is on a bicycle for 20 seconds and he comes back with a split lip because he decided to pop a wheelie. Yeah, that was no kind of hands. Did, exactly. you, did you get to meet the communities? And because that's what I'm obsessed about too, like the RV yes. world. It's a culture. It's, it's a, a whole culture. culture. It's, it's fantastic. And the interesting thing is the RV culture does not end at like the RV park. Now, like when I see an RV in town, like where I live, you know, I kind of give the guy a nod and he gives me a nod. And then we usually discuss hitches, you know, um, <laughs> it's like a whole, and like everybody has the same gripes. Like, why can't the forester just carry something bigger? Like everybody has the same very specific gripes that sound absurd if you don't know the culture. Yeah, I've, I've done a tiny little RV trip, you know, 10 minutes away from my house just to see if I would like it and in really? a campground. And uh, I did, I loved it. I did it twice and uh, I just want to be close enough to home. You rented an RV for a 10 minute drive? Yeah, I didn't even actually drive it there. My friend drove it there and parked it and yeah. then I went and stayed there. Well, like, that is I, a definite dry run. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, if, if I went out, I got out, you know, I don't. And this, you feel? I, I loved it. I loved the yeah. people. Everyone was so nice to me. They were offering me things. It was, felt so neighborly. And it was yes. just, it was something kind of beautiful about it. I, 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 it was a very interesting thing. I thought I'd be like, I don't want to see people. And I was the opposite. I was like, hey, I'll share this with yes. you. And, it was I think of, it's because we no longer we feel like so infantilized in our normal lives, like in New York City, you know, because you don't like fix anything. And then here, because you're in charge of everything, you feel like confident enough to talk to people like, you know, the way early man used to talk to people because you're not like infantilized by, you know, mass technology. Yeah. Did you did you get to see the country and take pictures and all that stuff? Yeah. I mean, it was totally surreal in the sense that like so. You know, I mean, it's probably already a surreal experience because you're kind of like on the open road or whatever that's supposed to be. But uh, during a pandemic, it was truly like empty. Like we went to the Grand Canyon, which was open and we were the only ones there. Like we went to these amazing towns, you know, Lawrence, Kansas, St. Louis, Albuquerque, and no one was there. We would park like we would park on the grounds of like a museum and we would like walk around. It was like I was in Big or Honey, I Shrank. The, I don't know, whatever movie that conjures that nice experience. This is a dream for me. That's unbelievable. That is yeah. unbelievable that you did that. I love that you did that. Uh, and, and another pandemic. Yeah. You, you, didn't, you didn't freak out because we've talked about this. You're, you're open about dealing with uh, anxiety. Did you have anxiety at all during, do you have it now during the pandemic? No, no, no. I have been anxiety free since whenever the pandemic struck. I, anytime there's a real crisis in the world, I'm like kind of an American hero. 364 <laughs> days of the year, American coward. <laughs> crisis. American hero, yeah. you know, because I'm, I'm in a panic that something terrible is going to happen. I mean, I think there's been generations of me, you know, in my lineage that are in a panic waiting for the bad thing to happen. And so it makes us look really out of step with society and worried. But when something actually happens, we're the only one that's ready for it. You know what I mean? That's like, right. you know, I carry a flare in my back pocket just in case. It looks weird most of the time. But then, you know, if your car gets, you know, you a blow a flare. tire. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can we talk about the, uh, the Audible original? I love that yeah. people are doing this now. This is the one thing I think is kind of, uh, you know, a little bit 
uh, cool things coming out of this awful uh, situation that we're in is everyone's getting very creative and, uh, and, and seeing what they can do to, to just give people content and help people in any, any second of uh, normalcy. It just feels good for people. You did this audible, uh, almost like a, a, a audible movie kind of called When You Finish Saving the World. You wrote it, yeah. you star in it. How would you describe this? Yeah, it's essentially like a kind of, it's like a novel told from the three characters perspective, but it's all audio. So it's like, uh, it would be structured like a book, like, um, and it takes place over the course of 30 years. Uh, I play a new father and then you jump 15 years into the future in 2032 um, and Finn Wolfhard, the actor, plays my son at 15. Oh. And then you jump back 30 years to 2002 and Caitlin Deaver, the actress, um, plays my wife before we met. And so it's like this kind of a story of a family over the course of 30 years, all centered in uh, this town in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, I love that. I cannot wait to, uh, to listen to this. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. And, and you're already going to make a film version about this? Is that true? Yeah. So, yeah, I adapted like a small part of it and wrote a movie that I'm going to direct um, uh, with Julianne Moore and then this wonderful company, A24, is coming on to produce it. So we're yeah, about to leave for Manitoba where there is, you know, very little virus. Uh, I love uh, A24, by the way. And Any, anytime I see that logo come up, I go, oh, this movie's going to be cool. I know. I, I was. I know. I, I'm having trouble, like, just because of my own pessimism, picturing the thing that I'm worried I'm going to make coming after the logo that I have a lot of confidence in. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to listening to your uh, uh, Audible uh, original. Uh, it's always good to see you. Stay safe, and uh, yeah, wait another four years, then do another RV trip. Thanks. I'll see you on the road. We can give each other a knowing <laughs> nod. My thanks to yeah. Jesse Eisenberg. See, I don't even have the nod down. I know. I know. Uh-huh. 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 U